Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Mindy Egan and in today's video I'm going to show you how I created these two sweet dreamy baby cards using products from Lawn Fawn's summer 2020 release. I'm going to start off by stamping out my images. This is the new All the Clouds stamp set from Lawn Fawn's summer 2020 release and I consider this a very good staple stamp set to have in your stash because of all the different cloud sizes you see here and the different size rainbows i'm really interested in the clouds the reason being is i always get a lot of questions of if i have clouds in my scenes where did i get them how did i know what stamp set to go towards for it and this stamp set is going to make it so simple for you they have so many different variety of clouds on here so you can create them for if you have interactive cards um, maybe a tiny area to add a scene to so they have all these different sizes and i'm going to start by stamping them all out i actually do this with a lot of my sets i stamp out a ton of images and then that way i have them ready to go and i can just color when i'm ready to so I'm lining them up on the bottom of this white cardstock. This is Lawn Fawn's white cardstock, which is Copic friendly. And once I have them laid out, spaced so that I can put down the coordinating die later on, I'm going to pick them up with the door of my Misty, and I'm going to stamp them in Lawn Fawn's jet black ink. This is a Copic safe ink. And notice I'm stamping on the bottom portion of my cardstock. That is because I have a little trick I'm going to show you along the way. So once I have that inked up really well, I'm going to just gently push down. Now I don't push real hard because I don't want to squish my stamp images. I want to make sure that they stay in the form that they were designed to. And if it means that I have to stamp them again, that is exactly why I use my Misty. This is the Hero Arts and My Sweet Petunia collaboration Misty. So it's got the black ruler on the side. I'm a big fan of the color black. And I'm just going to stamp those again and I have a really nice crisp line here. Now I just took that cardstock and I flipped it so I can stamp all of these clouds again. I'm actually going to use this one whole sheet of clouds for one card because I am adding a lot of those clouds to the front of my card. So this allows me to stamp these multiple times and I will do this again on another piece of white cardstock for my second card. So I will have two full sheets of clouds and honestly, like I said, I would do this anyway because my clouds are already lined up on here. I will stamp multiple clouds at one time and then put them off on the side for later or even color them all up and die cut them and have them ready for projects when I get those projects ready. So now I have these all stamped out. And I'm just going to take my stamp chamois and clean off my stamps. I don't show this a lot in my videos, but I wanted to include a lot of information here for you today. That was just my stamp chamois case, which can be picked up on the Lawn Fawn website. And I just take my damp chamois cloth and I'm just dabbing and rubbing to clean off all of that ink. And then once my stamps are clean, I will just put them back on the carrier sheet. Now I can work on the Copic coloring portion of the video. And I did use two different sets of colors for the clouds. This set is going to be purple. My other set is going to be blue. And the colors I'm using are BV01, BV000, and BV0000. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm starting off with my mid-tone or my middle color, which is the BV. 000 and I will have all of these colors listed on the screen for you as well I am doing some really really soft colors because I didn't want to uh, Draw too much attention to them. I don't want to have the whole thing colored in I just wanted them to be soft and kind of dreamy looking and clouds can be really hard to color so what I'm doing is I am taking that middle color and I'm just adding in a little bit of shading around where the clouds form. So kind of in that little crease area, that's just going to give the clouds a little bit of form and dimension so you can really see they're, they're puffy. And I'm doing that, like I said, with that middle color. Now you could leave it just like this. You wouldn't even have to add any more color if you don't want to. It's hard to see on screen, but you can see it really good in real life. The smaller clouds are a little bit harder 
uh, to add those colors in. If you have a bullet tips in your Copic markers or if you have a more fine tip um, nibs on yours, that makes it a lot easier. Mine are the brush tips, so it's a little hard to get in there on the smaller ones. Now my second color here is the lightest one, which is that BV0000. And like I said, this one you could really skip if you wanted to. This just helps blend those lines out a little bit more into the clouds. It softens them up a little bit, uh, which is also why, like I said, I stuck with the really soft colors. And I'm going around all of those areas. I'm not, like I said, coloring in those clouds at all. It's just kind of blending that out. Then I'm going to take that darkest color I have in the batch. See, there's a close-up. There's just very, very faint lines in there. Then I will take the darkest color, which is the BV01, and all I'm going to do with this is add little dots. This can be kind of hard, like I said, with my brush tip, but I'm going to stand my brush up almost straight up and down and very lightly go to my paper. And I'm just adding these little dots right in those creases. That just kind of adds a little bit more interest to them. Like I said, it's another part you could skip. You don't even have to really add a lot of coloring to these if you don't want. But I did go around to all of them and just add those little dots in those little corners and creases of the clouds. When I have that done, I'll give you a close up of what that looks like because I know that can be really hard to see on screen with such light colors. And you'll see how it adds just a little bit of interest to the clouds. So there is a close up just really fine little dots and some small groupings, some bigger, some smaller. And I'm going to repeat the same process for the blues. Uh, I'm going to show you a portion of it, but I did use the same process throughout the whole thing. The colors that I'm using for this is BG01, BG000, and BG0000. So you can use any color combination that you would like. You can use rainbow clouds, you can do pinks, whatever color clouds you would like. I thought the purple and the blue would just look really good with the backgrounds that I was going to be doing. And then here's another close up using the blues, just in those little creases, just so it makes those clouds look poofy. <laughs> Once I have that done, I'll go ahead and use the coordinating die to die cut these out. And I did kind of a little trick to make this die cutting process go really quick. So I'm lining these all up. Now the bigger clouds, um, I am using the purple tape and I use two pieces of purple tape on these bigger images. The reason being is that I don't want to have a lot of tape going across these clouds because I don't want to risk any ripping or any sticky stuff on there. So I'm putting those on the outer edges, two pieces. I'm using because when I run these through a die cut machine, I don't want one end to pop up and then that would not cut it correctly. It would be kind of off kilter. Now for the smaller ones, you, you only really need the one piece and I do kind of stretch that all the way across. They're really small images. So once I have those all held down, I'm going to run those through the die cut machine. And then these bigger ones, I can just kind of pop out and the smaller ones, I'm going to flip it over and just kind of peel them off because it's just purple tape. It's just a really nice low tack sticky tape that helps holding the dies in place. And I'm going to save this piece and use it as a template. This is going to make die cutting go so much quicker with all of these images. So off screen, I did go ahead and cut this sheet in half. So four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm using this first one as a template. You can see I didn't remove any of that purple tape. I'm leaving it all in place. I'm just going to line up my images on that other half with my template, hold it in place at the top with some more purple tape, kind of like a hinge, and then run that through the die cut machine. And this is going to cut them out super quick. I don't have to keep taking them off, putting them back on. I just keep using this first one as a template. And I will do that for my other sheet of cardstock where I had done uh, the blue ones. So once I popped everything out, kind of peeled away everything and they were lined up perfectly. So here I did go ahead, cut that sheet in half again. So it's four and a quarter by five and a half holding it in place and then running those through the die cut machine. And I'll just set those off on the side for now to work on the rest of my card. 
Now I'm going to work on my stamping and I am using the Swan Soiree stamp set. There is a longer sentiment at the bottom that I did a little stamp surgery to so I cut that down because I wanted my sentiment to kind of be down the center. I didn't want a lot of it long and hanging out because I wanted my clouds to kind of surround this. So I did cut my stamp set a little bit and then I'm going to line up the sentiment with my misty corners. This is the ruler out of that pack to help me make sure that these are lined up straight and I'm just kind of eyeballing the spacing. I want to make sure that the spacing is all even between each of them uh, and then it's just a really nice even margin going down my card stack. Now I am heat embossing these first. I had somebody ask me one time, why do I heat emboss first? And the reason being is I'm gonna be doing ink blending and ink can take a while to dry and I don't have a lot of patience. So when I'm using the oxides, I'm going to heat emboss first and then I'm gonna ink blend. Um, if I were to do it the other way around, I have to wait for that ink to dry. Otherwise our embossing powder sticks everywhere. So. I like to do the heat embossing first. Now I want to make sure that my sentiment is lined up correctly and all straight. So I brought in a piece of acetate. I'm laying that over my cardstock. This is the mermaid cardstock from Lawn Fawn. And I'm going to ink that sentiment up with some black ink and just kind of look through the door of my Misty, stamp down, and just get a feel for it. Is it all spaced correctly? Is it even on the margins? So using that acetate is a really great trick to use if you're double checking your straightness. And then once that's done, I can wipe that acetate off. It's not a permanent ink when it comes to the acetate. So I just kind of clean off my stamp and then I can clean off that acetate sheet and I will be ready to heat emboss. Now for heat embossing, I'm going to use my anti-static powder tool. So I'm just sprinkling that on the cardstock and spreading that around. This helps reduce any static and helps so that my embossing powder only sticks to where I want it. Then I'm going to use the Lawn Fawn Clear Ink. This is an embossing ink, which means it's sticky and my embossing powder will stick to this. So I'll ink up my stamp set really well close the door and stamp that down. Once again, pressing lightly, I don't want to squish these. I want to make sure everything is legible. So I'll stamp that down and I'm going to ink it up one more time just to make sure I have a really good impression. It can be really hard sometimes to see. So just giving that another stamp down and then I can bring in my Lawn Fawn white embossing powder and I will sprinkle this all over my cardstock and I can tap the excess off back into my little container here. I have probably like two jars of embossing powder in this little uh, tray that I have. So I'll sprinkle that on, tap off the excess. And now for heat embossing, you wanna make sure your heat tool is nice and hot before you come to your cardstock. So I have mine off on the side warming up. And then once that's nice and hot, I'll come to the cardstock and melt that embossing powder. Having it warmed up before coming to your cardstock just helps minimize some warping. And I'm going to repeat these same steps for my pink cardstock. So once again, just prepping that with an anti-static powder tool, inking that up with the embossing ink, sprinkling on that white embossing powder, and then heat setting that. Now I wanted to show you this quick. This is my Tim Holtz mini glass media mat. Uh, off screen when I'm creating and not doing videos, I almost always am on a glass media mat. I don't show it in videos because I cannot stand the glare and the reflection that I get. Um, but I did want to say I do love this. I use it all the time and this is the mini version which I've been pulling out a lot. I have a very small space and the mini glass media mat is great for me because I can tuck it away in a corner. It's small. I can just grab and put in my little area on my table. Uh, and it's just, I, I've really been liking it. So that's what I'm going to use today. I don't have too much of a glare. So I wanted to show you that. And I'm going to be doing some ink blending. The colors I'm using for my mermaid cardstock, I'm starting with Peacock Feathers Distress Oxide Inks. You could use regular inks, but the oxides kind of have a chalky look to them. So it tones down the color a little bit, which is what I wanted for my skies. 
I am using some blending brushes to do this. You could use any sponge applicator or any blending tool that you prefer. I like these brushes with the bristles for the ink blending on this because they give a really nice soft look. I don't have any harsh lines. And also because I heat embossed, my paper is a little bit warped and the brushes just kind of glide onto that cardstock, especially using the glass media mat, which is another reason why I use it. I do a lot of ink blending and I start off the edge of the cardstock and blend onto it. The edges can be darker, but I wanna lighten it as I go towards the center of my cardstock. So I wanna keep that middle portion really nice and light. I'm not even putting any ink over my embossed area. So lots of reasons uh, why I'm using this mat when I ink blend and why I use the brushes that I do. So just kind of softening those edges around my sentiment. And then I can bring in a darker color. So I am going to bring in the chipped sapphire. I'm gonna bring in another brush because I like to have uh, some of my colors separate, the darker colors versus the lighter colors. And I am going to go around the very edges of my card panel here. I don't want to go all the way in. I want it to be kind of a gradual effect, darker on the outside, lighter in the middle. Just picking up that ink. I do dab off on the side to kind of get rid of that first brush of ink. Uh, and honestly, when it comes to ink blending, the more ink you have on your cardstock, the easier it is to blend. I have found that a lot. So if you're struggling with ink blending, just keep at it, keep practicing, add some more ink, go back over it with your previous ink if you're finding you're getting some harsh lines. So once I have that blended, I'm just going to spritz water down on my mat here and wipe that clean. So it was clean up is a breeze with the glass media mats. And then I'm ready for my next background, which is going to be uh, the pink version of this. So once again, I'm bringing in the blending brushes and I'm starting with picked raspberry. I'm going around those very outer edges and then I'm getting lighter as I go towards the center. So as I'm going in towards the center, uh, the ink has kind of worn off. It's more harsh on the outer edges. And then plus I'm not pressing as hard. So you just kind of got to go with a light hand and I'll go around all of those edges with that picked raspberry, leaving the center part kind of white, or not white, but just not adding ink over that. My second color that I'm gonna bring in is going to be Wilted Violet. So same thing, I'm just gonna go around the very outer edges of this cardstock, leaving that center point, kind of the transition from light pink to dark pink, and then to the purple. Now, as I was blending these edges, it wasn't giving me quite the contrast that I wanted. It wasn't as dark around the edges as I prefer. And like I said, that's my personal taste. I like major contrast in my cards. If you follow me, I, I just love having those contrasting colors. And the purple just wasn't really doing it for me. So I'm going to clean up my area and I'm going to bring in the chipped sapphire, which looks really gorgeous for these combinations. It just kind of takes on a whole different shade of purple. So going around the very outer edges with that chipped sapphire, making sure to kind of hold that pink. And still I wanted a little bit more contrast, so I brought in some black soot. Now I have a blending brush dedicated to black. So that's what I have here. And adding that black to the very outer edges and then I was happy with my contrast. So you just kind of have to play with it, go with the flow to what feels good to you. I did bring the pink back in a little bit to soften up those edges going in towards the center. And then I'm calling that one good. And I wipe any excess ink off of my embossed sentiment with a paper towel. Now we're going to work with the Starry, St Starry Sky stencil. I'm a huge stencil fanatic and this stencil is just amazing. So I'm going to start with the blue background. I flipped my cardstock over, placing that on the stencil, and I'm going to hold it in place with some purple tape on the edges and at the top. You could spray this with Pixie Spray, which is a low-tech adhesive spray, but honestly, I'm doing such light ink blending here that I didn't feel the need to do that. So I'm just holding it in place with that purple tape, and I am going to use the Lawn Fawn Yeti Pigment Ink. 
pigment ink is very thick and can take a while to dry. We don't want to put a lot on here. I wanted a very light, soft, uh, starry sky background to this. It was just to add that little bit of sparkle to the background. So I'm picking it up with a blending brush and I'm going to put it off on the side because even just lightly touching it, you're going to get a lot on your brush. So I'm putting a lot of it off on the side. I'm going to come over to my stencil and very light hand, very light handed do the ink blending just on the very outer edges of my card. You can see the center there where it's the lightest point. So I'm just going around all of those edges, lightly picking up that Yeti ink and going around that entire card front with uh, the blending tool and this Starry Sky stencil. <laughs> then once I'm happy with that, I'll just carefully remove that and it leaves such a gorgeous sky background. Just totally in love with this. Hats off to Lawn Fawn. I, I'm, in, I'm in stencil heaven with this. So I'm just going to take that purple tape off. My mat's already dirty. My stencil's already dirty. So I'm going to go ahead and do my pink card as well. Same thing. I'm going to lay that down, hold it in place with the purple tape, flip that over, and once again, grab some of that Yeti ink and kind of dab it off on the side so I don't have a harsh look to it. If you get too much on here, it's okay, but you want to make sure you're giving it some dry time. So it's, it's not a big deal if you come in too hard. Uh, you might like that look, but I just wanted it to kind of be soft and subtle in the background. Then we can do a peel and reveal. So carefully peeling that back up and I'll just rinse that stencil off in my sink. I'll take off that purple tape and we'll work on adding some shimmer and shine to our background. So this is going to be using the liquid stardust. Now all of your shiny stuff is going to be settled at the bottom of your bottle. So you want to make sure you shake this up really, really well. And then I'm going to take a couple drops off on the side onto my glass mat. And I'm going to bring in a couple drops of water to dilute that and make it so I can flick onto my background. So just a couple drops and then I'll take a paintbrush and I'll mix that together. And I do come in later and add a couple more drops just to help kind of spread that out a little bit more. And I'm just going to tap my paintbrush to flick this onto the background. So another reason why I'm using the mat is it's just easy cleanup when it comes to all of this sparkly mess that I'm making. And I'm doing both backgrounds at once, trying to avoid kind of that middle area, but they're such subtle sparkles, it's not going to hurt if you do get it on your sentiment. And then I just want to give this a couple minutes to dry before I attach anything to the background. So here are all of my purple clouds. Now I already had done this card before creating the video. So I am actually looking at my previous card I made as a guide where I want all of my clouds to go. So I'm going to just kind of walk you through my thought process on everything while I'm laying this out. Now that's key number one, or that's point number one, is I lay everything out before, before I glue anything down. I like to make sure my images are spaced. I don't like to have clouds uh, in line with each other when it's going down. I think it's just more eye appealing if they're scattered uh, at different lengths, different heights, some on top of each other, some hanging off the edge of the card. That just kind of gives it a more natural feel when it's hanging off the edge. And then once I'm happy with placement, I'll use my tape runner to just add those. And I'm not even pushing down that hard just in case I want to change anything up. So once everything is glued down, I can flip it over and I can take my scissors and just trim off any of that excess that's overhanging. And then I can work on the blue background. Now I did speed this up quite a bit, but I did want to show you the process for it as well. Uh, and I'm using this one as a guide for my next card. So it does go really fast once you have the layout of it that you prefer. So once again, just placing those clouds all over the background. And a lot of times I will take a picture of it before I glue anything down and walk away. If you're looking at things for too long, sometimes it just kind of all meshes together. If you walk away for a few minutes, come back, you're like, oh yeah, that totally works. That You know, just take a picture, walk away. So once again, I just trimmed off any of those excess clouds and now I'm gonna add them to card bases. 
I took a piece of white cardstock that's eight and a half by 11 and I trimmed it in half. So this is uh, four and a quarter by 11 and I'm using my scoreboard and my bone folder to score that at five and a half. So my card front will be four and a quarter by five and a half. I don't push real hard. I do like four or five times I go over that line. That just, um, I think helps so I don't get any cracks in my cardstock. And then I'll fold that in half and I'm gonna reinforce that fold with the bone folder. Then I'm gonna bring in my panels and I'm gonna line it up over this card base just to make sure that I cut it correctly. Sometimes I have a little bit of white showing. So I'm gonna just kind of bring that in, eyeball it, make sure that it's going to fit that entire card front. Once I'm sure of that, I'll go ahead and add some tape to this card front. Now you can, can add it to your blended panel, but just in case my sparkles weren't dry, I feel safer adding it to my card base. And then I can take my panel and attach that to the card base. And I'll do the same thing with my pink card. So I went over a lot of things that I do in the process of my card making, which is why this video is a lot longer than I normally do. But I know I don't explain a lot of my process and I hope I did a little bit better job explaining why I do the things I do um, and that it helps you in your card making as well. So here's a look at both of the cards and I'll also give you a close up shot and kind of tilt the card to show you all the shimmer. But I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm sorry that it was a little bit longer, but I hope it helps you and inspires you. I will have all of my supplies listed down below in the video description and over on my blog as well, along with pictures of both of these cards. So I just really want to say thank you. And if you enjoyed today's video and you're not a subscriber yet, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. Be sure to click the little bell notification so you're notified of when any new videos are posted. And give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That thumbs up will help YouTube know to share it with others that may enjoy it as well. So I just want to say thank you again for joining me today. I will see you next time. And until then, have an amazing day.